Hey there guys, how's it going? I hope you're all keeping incredibly well. Today I'm doing something a bit of a different video today. So today I'm going to be previewing the Only Yates Handicap. Yep, that's a, that's a handicap race, I'm just making sure. Uh, so today I'm going to be um, previewing the Only Yates Handicap. It is a 37.8 kilometre race, I just measured it out. Um, Actually, no, it might be a bit longer because of some road works and stuff. I think it's about, they say it's about 40 kilometres or so. By the way, so this is the elevation profile just here, down the bottom, just here. You can see we just head straight out and then come straight back in again. So it's a pretty hilly profile. Um, the first um, 10k and the last 10k aren't too bad, um, but then there's this massive climb up to the turnaround point and then we go back down again so obviously coming back again is going to be the easier way to go also usually for coming back again uh, it's usually a tailwind so that's usually pretty good so you you can usually hit pretty high speeds coming back again along here although this bit here just up here just after the 10 kilometer or so to go mark. Um, that's what really catches people out just through there. That um, gets really hard at some points because it steps up plateaus, steps up plateaus. So you really got to watch out for that one. So anyway, let's get right into it. So first off, we're going to go straight to the start point. It's at the high range. I can't actually remember what it's called, but it's up, up the top of high range. It's hard to miss. There's a massive cement thing just here. Let me get rid of this one. So there's a massive cement patch right here and everyone will be parked up on the day. So if you're actually doing this race, you'll know about it. Um, we ca you can't go in there. You can't go, well you can go down that road, but there's a fence down there and it says something like Commonwealth land or something and you're not allowed to go past that. Definitely not. You cannot go past there or else we'll get in big trouble. So either way. Uh, we start off just here. We actually start off in this little road just here. This one just here. Um, and then oh, you can just go left. You just head straight down that way. Um, and to start off, we've got you've got a pretty decent hill just up there, but it's not too bad. On the way back, that's when you start really hitting it. Um, when you're coming back again, you really have to watch out for how bumpy the road actually gets, um, it, especially if you're in a bunch. Um, do not go to the other side of the road, that's really bad. Um, we've had incidents along there several times. This will be the third year that I've done this race. I, this is actually, personally, this is my favourite race of the season, um, even though it is pretty short. So yeah. So the finish just comes straight in here. It's a, just a simple out and back. So uh, the first half, let me just get this back up again. The first half of the um, the race is pretty straightforward. Uh, since it's a handicap, um, nothing besides really chasing will be happening. There won't be anything else. You won't, won't be able to attack at that point. Okay, Google Earth is doing something weird. Okay, never mind. Okay, it's not going to show me the elevation profile. Never mind. So basically, it's um, not too hilly till about the 10k mark, which is about here. And at the 10 kilometer mark, it uh, starts to ramp up. And then you've got a bit of a downhill just before here, which is about 5k's before the turnaround. Um, and then you climb up again to the turnaround point. And after this turnaround point, one of the things that you can do is you can almost attack. If your group isn't too big, you could possibly attack through that area there. It won't actually give me street view just through here, I don't believe, because they're doing weird things with it at the moment. Yeah, no, it won't give me street view. So just after the turnaround point, which I might be able to show you, if Google Earth allows me. Here we go. 
This is the turnaround point just here. Here we are. Oh, no, it's down the other side of the hill. Du, du, du. The turnaround point is... Here we are. This is the turnaround point just down here. Here we are. This is the turnaround point right here. And we turn just here. Um, you really just got to slow it down. Just take it nice and easy and just get around that corner. Uh, just keep your group together. Make sure your group doesn't split through there. Um, also, it is a neutral zone 100 meters before and 100 meters afterwards. So you also got to not do that. You can't attack. Um, so 100 meters afterwards, which is here. So you climb this hill where I've accidentally put the turnaround point. I forgot that it's actually down here because we can't go across double white lines which is what's happening up there. So you go down this hill just here and you come to the bottom um, and then you turn around and you go straight back up the hill again. Uh, so you've got to make sure that you relax coming down this hill here. Make sure you're not on the front or else you will end up being pretty dead by the time they turn around because that's after that 100 metre um, after the 100 metres of um, neutralisation of the race, they're back at it again because you've got to chase so hard for this race. The neutralisation zone will probably be from about here, so when the island starts to when we turn and then back again to where the island finishes. If you're in a smaller group, you can possibly attack. This, uh, this has actually worked for me a couple times, no, once in the first time I did this race um, in 2014. When I did this race for the first time, uh, I attacked just after the turnaround point. I just got on the front and I rode away. It was, I think it was just because it was a smaller group and um, I probably wasn't doing as much work as I probably should have. So I, I attacked and I went away. And it was a good, it was good tailwind that day, so I managed to have um, a good tailwind all the way home, basically. Um, I averaged about 40 k's. I felt so good and that, until the group behind me caught me and I got caught up and then I, I couldn't sprint at that point. I was very bad at sprinting. So basically that's the uh, first half of the course there. Uh, you just, for the first part, you're probably most likely just going to be chasing the whole time. So you've really got to make sure that you stay right on that group, uh, take your turn. Uh, everyone's just, it's just like a team time trial all the way until the last 10Ks, unless you're in the first couple of groups. If you're in the first couple of groups, you probably shouldn't mess around either because those, the groups behind are going to be flying, trying to catch you up, especially if there's not too much wind on that day. So basically when you're coming back, there isn't much opportunity to go for attack except for uh, this one I've just talked about here because it then is just downhill most of the way, all the way until you get, I believe it's called Reed River. Let me just check. This river just here. It's downhill all the way until, let me get to the river proper. Here we go. It's downhill all the way until this river j just here. And you'll know when you hit this river, because this river doesn't actually have any any um, barriers on the side. I, I don't think it has that. It doesn't have that much water in it at the moment. At the moment, I think it's mostly just sand. So don't be looking for water or anything, because there isn't any water up there at the moment. It's all just sand. Also, this road is crap. Watch out for how crap this road is. Uh, it's It will vibrate the hell out of you. Lucky it's only 40 kilometers or else you're going to be dead by the end of it. So if you're at this bridge um, and you're with a big group, just stay in that group. Don't try and get break away from that group because the from this point on, I think there's, that there's 10 kilometers to go and they'll be hitting it. You're going to be trying to catch... Um, the groups in front. This is where I got caught in 2014 uh, and I ended up in the lead group um, and I just sat in because I think I knew a couple of the guys in that group and I just sat in and I waited 
and then I didn't have any sprints so I just I think I ended up top 10 I think or maybe it was top 20 I can't remember it was a couple years ago now so if you're still at this bridge and you're in the top three groups and you're about within minute 30 seconds of the lead group you're still in with contention you're still in contention because there's still a, there's a bit of climbing to go a bit of downhill you still got a bit of time to be able to catch the groups in front so basically if you're at that bridge and you're in a group don't attack do a couple turns if you can but don't do too much work because you really got to save yourself for this last bit because this is where they'll be hitting it if you're by yourself uh, and you're still feeling good there's still a good chance that the group but uh, the group behind you is going to catch you so either you have to make a decision at that point whether you go for it or whether you just wait for the group behind if you could see the group behind you should probably wait for them because there's more chance of you being able to just sit up wait for that group behind you sit in and then them taking you to the end instead of you wasting your energy trying to stay in front of them and then they eventually ch catching you anyway but if you can't see anyone around you you should just keep hitting it because in this race there's it's a pretty good race for solo breakaways basically I've almost made it work in 2014. I just didn't know what I was doing. So here we go. The last bit, this last bit from Reed River, I believe it's called. Don't quote me on that one. It's just, you'll know when you hit that river. Because it's big, there's lots of sand everywhere. And it's one of the biggest bridges on the actual course. And then you hit 1k to go. This is probably one of the fastest run-ins that on for the Townsville Cycle Club calendar. As you can see, the road basically is just straight the whole time, all the way to the end. There's a slight curve to the right, slight curve to the left. But what you can't see from this is the hill. You'll climb this hill if you're in a group at about 45 because you've just come down this hill here, which you've just climbed another hill. It's a lot of rollers just before this last bit here. So you'll hit this hill at about 45, 40 k's an hour, depending on what group you're in. And you're going to hit that pretty fast. And you're, you have to really concentrate, and you have to remember where that 1k marker is. Let's just, let me, I'll, just let you sh I'll just show you that one once again. Obviously, the environment has changed around a bit since these photos were taken. This is 20, I think it says 2013 just there. Oh no, this is the 2016 ones, okay. So these are pretty, de these are pretty recent, obviously, because they're 2016. Uh, but still, before the race, ride out a kilometre from the beginning, and then ride back, uh, or maybe like two kilometres out from the beginning, and then ride back in again, just uh, so you know where that finish is because you're going to be hitting it and you're going to have to really remember in your head where that a one kilometer to go is because that's when you need to be thinking about your sprint. You'll come over this right hand bend. You come through just through the, uh, around here and then you head down left and the first point at which you'll know that you're uh, with, with about 500 meters to go you'll come around this left hand bend just here very small road by the way, don't go on the other side of the road, very dangerous. First thing you'll know about it is you'll be able to see the cars. You can't see them there obviously because there's no cars parked there, but you'll be able to see all the cars parked up. The run into the finish, about 200 metres to go, you'll hit this thing. So that's about 150 to go. 250, uh, so 200, you'll be able to see the finish line. I don't know what they'll be marking the finish line with there because I don't actually know. Usually they finish it just before this little bit of cement so that you're not uh, finishing on a changed surface because that will obviously unbalance the bike and everything. Uh, watch out for trucks and everything as well. Don't want to be smashing into trucks at 50 k's an hour. But this is a massive downhill straight into here. So you really got to watch out for that one as well because you can pick up a lot of speed. A lot of people will... will well, what will happen is once they go over that um, first hill, 
that sorry that last hill. Once you get over that last hill, and if you're in the top five or so, you've got a good chance then. But if you're further back, you gotta try. You gotta step on it then. You gotta try get up into that top five because what will happen is those four or five people, so three or four, maybe five people will just basically lock out the front because you can't go much faster than what you're going at that point. Even if you really, um, you're gonna have to re be really spinning to try and get past them because it's a downhill and that usually it's also a tailwind. So you really gotta get up in there for this last little bit or else you won't have much of a chance. Also, don't sprint too early. Do not sprint too early. If you're gonna sprint, always uh, always get on someone else's wheel before they sprint, especially for this one just here. In other, uh, other races, you can go for the sprint yourself, but not for this one because it's such a long way out and sometimes people misjudge it. And if someone misjudges it, you'll know about it because they'll go off the front and no one will follow them. Or someone will just sit in their wheel, wait, wheel, wait for them to explode and just go straight around. So about just at this island here is when you want to start really putting in your sprint. You want to be a, a going pretty fast before you hit that. But once you hit this little island here, you want to be a, a going almost full out. You want to be on your 11 or 12 or whatever your last gear is. So basically to sum up, first 20 kilometers or so of the course, you can't do much because you're just going to be chasing because of that's the nature of the race. Once you hit this turnaround point, neutralized 100 meters before, 100 meters after. Well, that's what, well, I assume what they're going to be doing because that's what they've been doing the previous years. And also, you don't attack in the turning. That's just not, not very nice. Uh, so you turn, but then after that 100 meters or so, if you, can, if you have the legs, go for it a bit. And if people follow, Hell, you could probably go for a bit of a solo attack because you've got to climb up this hill, you've got to da go down, and then there's rollers. This goes down, it goes down all the way to here, and then you've got rollers all the way back in to the 1K to go. If you're still in the top three groups within a minute of the break, you can possibly catch them, but you've got to work for it. You've really got to work for everything in this race. So basically, that's all for today. This has gone a lot longer than I thought I would, thought it would. I am the cyclist vlogger, and I will see you later.